impact of rigid body when a rigid body collides with another object that object may be another rigid object or it may be a point object what will happen for instance you take this rod the rod is moving with velocity v a velocity v not this is a fixed point p the rod collides with this fixed point during the time of collision what happens this point p gives certain reaction force say along the normal direction normal to the rod it gives a reaction force suppose rx along tangential direction it gives a reaction force let it be ry okay while it is in contact with this fixed point p so during the collision or collision can be called impact of the rigid body here the rigid body is rod during the collision or impact of the rigid body with the fixed point p the reaction force r the net reaction force is r they are the components of the reaction force offered by the fixed point onto the rod or to the rod so there is a reaction force passes through the point p during the collision or the impact of the rigid body with the fixed point p the reaction force passes through the point p if you choose the point p as the reference point reference point then this force cannot produce a torque about this point if we choose the point of collision as the reference point this point of collision is p since reaction force passes through the point p torque about the reaction force about this point p will be equal to zero or we can say the impulse of the reaction force the angular impulse of the reaction force about this point will be zero therefore the change in angular momentum of the rod will be zero about or with respect to the point p provided one condition is met
and this condition is there should not be any slip at this point. This point should not slip. Let us take a simple example for this. The example is the example is the same rod fitted with a hook or fitted with a ring is falling with velocity v. Find the angular velocity of the rod just after being hooked. This is the hook H at H. During the time of collision, the rod will experience certain force. During the time of collision, the rod will experience certain force. This force is given by the hook. This force is the reaction force R. The reaction force is passing through this point H. Therefore, the reaction force cannot produce a torque about this point. Hence, The angular impulse of the reaction force R about this point H will be equal to 0. Hence, you can conserve the angular momentum of the rod above this point as you discussed in the theoretical part. So, it is understood that the rod's angular momentum can be conserved about this hook. Angular momentum of the rod remains conserved. The final angular momentum of the rod will be equal to initial angular momentum of the rod. This is the initial case just after collision. This is the final case. The initial case, this is final case. You just before collision, this is just. after collision. Just before collision, the angular momentum about this point will be only the orbital angular momentum because we have not given any spin. The rod is not <coughs> spinning. The rod does not spin just before the collision. So, initial angular momentum L i is equal to m v into L by 2 in inward direction and L f after being hooked the rod moves or rotates about this fixed axis. So, this is a fixed axis rotation now. So, the angular momentum about this axis is equal to moment of inertia about this point h into the angular velocity of the rod. Angular velocity is pointed along negative x direction and 
and moment of inertia of the rod about this end point is equal to m l square by 3. So, the final angular momentum will be equal to minus m l square by 3 omega k k f l f. You get l i, you get l f. Substitute these two values in the equation of the conservation of angular momentum to find the angular velocity of the rod just after the collision. That is m l square by 3 into minus omega k k f is equal to minus m v l by 2. This velocity of center of mass that is v center of mass is at a distance of l by 2 from this. So, m v of angular momentum of the center of mass with respect to this point that is the orbital angular momentum where a spin angular momentum will be 0. So, this is the total angular momentum of the rod just before the collision. This is the total angular momentum of the rod just after the collision. So, the next step we are getting the angular velocity that will be equal to 2 v by 2 l answer. Since it is positive, our assumed direction is correct. The direction of assumption we have assumed the direction of omega clockwise that is correct. We have calculated the angular velocity of the rod just after being hooked at h. One interesting thing we would like to discuss here. During the time of collision, gravity also is acting. So, during this time, the angular impulse of gravity with respect to h is given as m j into this distance l by 2, this is the torque applied by gravity into the time or integral of the gravitational torque that is the angular impulse of gravity is equal to m g l by 2 of course, minus k k f is the direction of the torque take it out of the integral. So, integral of this d t 0 to t or del t you can just write del t is the time of collision time of collision with the hook this gives us minus m g l by 2 del t into k k f since the time of collision is extremely small this quantity can be neglected. This quantity can be neglected. The gravitational torque is not equal to zero, it is finite torque, but the torque is multiplied with a very, very small time interval of the collision. Therefore, the gravitational impulse, angular impulse provided by gravity about this point is negligibly small. Hence, we can conserve the angular momentum of the rod above this point just before and just after the collision accurately. So, in this case one assumption the angular impulse of gravity can be ignored and gravitational torque gravity force is a non-impulsive force. So, a torque due to gravity is a non-impulsive torque and when this non-impulsive torque is a very small torque, when it is multiplied with a very, very small time interval of collision, the product will be extremely small and can be ignored to conserve the angular momentum of the rod about this point. So, this is a standard practice. We adopt or we apply while we conserve the angular momentum of the rigid bodies during the impact or collision with others.
So the basic equation is Newton's second law of rotation or impulse momentum equation in rotational form. The net impulse, the net angular impulse will be equal to change in angular momentum of the body above that point. The net angular impulse should be proved to be zero above this point, then only we can conserve the angular momentum of the rod above this point. This is the essence of conservation of angular momentum, which is one of the tool uh, during the solution of the impact of rigid body in most of the cases. Well, let us take another example. Let us take the same rod which moves at the velocity v and The rod collides with this fixed support. Now the question arises about which point there is a possibility of conserving the angular momentum of the rod. about which point we can conserve the angular momentum of the rod. Let us choose this point P. Here, no effect of gravity. No effect of gravity. Gravitational effect is ignored, or we can imagine this collision taking place or the rod is moving. in the horizontal plane or you can think that this board is horizontal. Here it is not told that during the collision or just after the collision the rod will be hooked, hooked. Hooking means it is sticking to, to this point. Just after the collision the rod may not stick to this point. So, in this case can we conserve the angular momentum of the rod above this point? This is the question now. Well, this question can be asked in this way. If the rod falls at the velocity V onto the fixed support, can we conserve the angular momentum above this point? Question is same, but uh, we have drawn the figure in this way. This is also correct, this is also correct. This is the fixed support. Or you can ask this question in this way. The rod is falling with velocity v. This is the fixed support or fixed horizontal plane. Can you conserve the angular momentum about this point during the impact of the collision of the rod? Can we 
conserve the angular momentum of the rod about the point of collision this is more specific question now let us discuss you can consider any one problem let us take this diagram then we can discuss this problem here the angle is theta of inclination of the rod with respect to horizontal let us discuss this problem now during collision let us draw the body this point p is touching the rod collides it gives a reaction force the reaction force is n and its impulse is integral n dt during the collision we have the gravity force its impulse is integral mg dt can be written as mg you can take it out can be written as mg into delta delta is the time of collision can be ignored as i told you because this is the impulse of a non impulsive force what is this impulse of a non impulsive force for a very short time generally non impulsive forces are small forces compared to impulsive force this is an impulsive force this is the impulse of an impulsive force why that impulsive force n n is a n is an impulsive force mg is non impulsive force n is much greater than mg in, the, in this way during collision most of the cases in general let us choose the point p as the reference point with respect to the reference point the normal reaction passes they are how the normal reaction cannot produce a torque and the torque produced by gravity can be written as mgl by 2 normal reaction cannot provide a torque because it passes through the point itself during the collision gravity can produce a torque mgl by 2 and when this uh, torque is multiplied with a very small time interval mg l by 2 into dt this is called this is the impulse which impulse linear impulse and this is torque into the time interval torque into time this is the angular impulse and this is extremely small and uh, hence we can ignore it since the angular impulse is zero above this point we can conserve the angular momentum about this point but during the time interval of collision therefore change in momentum of the rod about this point or about the axis passing through this point which axis z axis will be equal to zero in other word we can say that angular momentum of the rod just before the collision that is initial angular momentum can be equated with the angular momentum of the rod just after the collision so this is what we can call the conservation of angular momentum of the rod about this point 
is possible. Can we conserve the angular momentum of the rod about the point of collision? Yes. Why? This is the solution. If he has find the velocities of the rod just after a collision. Next question. Velocity means we have linear velocity of the center of mass and we have angular velocity. Let us assume that V naught is the initial velocity of the rod. Let us take another example. The rod velocity just before the impact is V naught. Rod velocity just after the impact will be equal to V and angular velocity V omega. Now question arises, why should the rod will get an angular velocity? For this we need to draw another diagram. During the collision, the rod will experience two impulses. The rod will experience two types of impulses. One is linear, another is angular impulse. The linear impulse is n dt integral. I am not including the gravita gravitational force. The impulse of gravity is extremely small. It may be linear impulse, it may be angular impulse because the delta factor, the time interval of collision, the time of collision that factor will reduce this term to a vanishingly small quantity. Therefore, we are not considering that. We are only taking the impulse of the impulsive force that is the reaction force, normal reaction force offered by this obstacle. The angular impulse will be equal to n dt into L by 2. integral of this. So, n L by 2 dt integral of this. Due to the linear impulse, non-zero li linear impulse, the linear momentum of the rod will change. So, del p is not equal to 0. Therefore, the center mass velocity V will not be equal to V naught. Obviously, V will be less than V naught because impulse is acting opposite to the initial momentum. Therefore, final momentum is less than the initial momentum. Angular impulse about the center of mass, the torque produced by the normal reaction is n L by 2 and its time integral is the angular impulse. The angular impulse is directed inward. The angular impulse is clockwise, therefore, 
it will produce a clockwise change of angular momentum. Initial angular momentum with respect to center mass is 0 because initial angular velocity is 0. Therefore, the final angular velocity will be clockwise. This is the idea. Therefore, angular momentum of the rod with respect to center of mass is not equal to 0 because the angular impulse is not equal to 0. So, with respect to hence with respect to the center of mass the linear momentum and the angular momentum cannot be conjunct. Your reference point is center of mass. With respect to this reference point, we cannot conjunct neither the linear momentum nor angular momentum. Gravitational force passes through the center of mass, it produces zero torque. But this produces a non-zero torque about the center of mass. Therefore, the angular impulse is produced by the normal reaction about the center of mass. Hence, about the center of mass, we cannot conjure the angular momentum. A linear momentum cannot be conjured because the net impulse is up. Let us now take the reference point, the point of collision, let it be P. Let the reference point be P. Then with respect to this point, the angular impulse is equal to linear impulse into L by 2. It is not L by 2, linear impulse is the linear impulse into 0 because the linear impulse or the normal reaction passes through the point P. Therefore, torque produced by normal reaction its time integral will be equal to 0 because torque produced by the normal reaction or this impulsive force that is the normal reaction during the collision is equal to 0 because normal reaction passes through this point P. Since angular impulse is equal to 0, change in angular momentum will be 0 about or with respect to the point, the reference point P. Initial angular momentum and the final angular momentum of the rod about that point P will remain conjugated. We can conjugate the angular momentum of the rod about this point. However, linear momentum cannot be conjugated because there is a net linear impulse acting on the rod. Well, but one thing is very clear, why should it get an angular velocity? It is because of non-zero angular impulse acting on the rod about the center of mass. Well, once we have assumed omega and v of the rod, Finally, an initial omega is 0 since the rod is just given a linear velocity and linear velocity of the rod that is the velocity of the center of mass of the rod that is B naught. We can calculate the angular momentum where initial angular momentum of the rod 
is equal to its orbital angular momentum m v naught l by 2 in inward direction and final angular momentum of the rod orbital angular momentum is m v l by 2 inward minus k cap direction and it is spinning in clockwise direction. Spin angular momentum it is m l square by 12 that is the i c into omega in which direction minus k cap direction. So, this must be equated with this. Therefore, m v naught l by 2 can be equated with m v l by 2 plus m l square by 12 into omega m will be getting cancelled l by 2 will be getting cancelled from both sides to get v naught is equal to v plus l omega by 6. We have two unknown quantities v and omega and one equation. Therefore, we need another one equation to solve for the unknown quantities v and omega. And that equation is none other than Newton's empirical formula because here there is no chance of conserving the linear momentum. Conservation of linear momentum that equation we cannot write. So, next equation is Newton's empirical formula which states that minus e into velocity of approach is equal to velocity of separation. Approach velocity is the relative velocity between the contacting or the colliding points. This is 1.1, this is second point 2. This <coughs> first point, this is the second point. And this is the line of collision because this is the line of action. This is called line of impact or line of action. Or line of collision. Along this line between these two colliding points, what is the relative velocity? That is the velocity of approach just before the collision. Suppose downward is negative. So, approach velocity, approach velocity is equal to velocity of 1 minus velocity of 2, you can write v naught minus v naught minus its velocity 0 it is minus v naught velocity of separation this velocity here velocity is v naught now velocity of this point of the rod not center of mass, it is nothing to do with center of mass now, it is linked with the point of contact, this point velocity, not this point velocity. So, this point velocity will be equal to v minus l by 2 into omega rotational kinematics. This point velocity with respect to center of mass is uh, l by 2 omega and center mass velocity is v, therefore this point velocity is equal to l by 2 omega minus v because it is positive, downward is negative I have taken. Suppression velocity, velocity of this point that is l by 2 omega minus v, and this point velocity is 0. Now, apply the Newton's empirical formula, which tells that minus a velocity of approach as equal to velocity of separation minus a approach velocity is minus v naught as equal to separation velocity is l by 2 omega minus v. So, you are getting the second equation b 
plus E V naught is equal to L by 2 into omega. So, this is the second equation. Now, the concepts are Newton's empirical formula, second concept. And the first concept is conservation of angular momentum about the point of contact, a point of collision. Now, you can solve this two equations. Your task is to solve the equations 1 and 2 to obtain velocity of the center of mass and angular velocity of the rod just after the collision. So, here we cannot conserve the linear momentum. Let us now recap the entire thing by taking some examples known as concluding examples. 